All right, everybody, this is Dino Chris from Prehistoric Facts. This is a Q&A episode, so let's actually get started, shall we? Luke Zelli got some questions for me. So first one, what would happen if Brigma Fisider didn't go extinct? Well, Brigma Fisider is a sperm whale, and so it all depends on what kind of uh, Brigma Fisider you're talking about. If you're talking about Brigma Fisider strigensis, that is from the uh, Jurassic Fight Club uh, show, but it's a, an, actual, an actual animal that existed. Uh, during the Maya scene. And so what would happen if Brigmo Fisodus Gigantus did not go extinct? Uh, well, I would probably say that certain type, I would probably say it would be one of the top predators uh, in the ocean. And uh, and then I think it probably the competition it probably would have is probably would be uh, actual sperm whales and even orcas and so those would actually be the competition but Brigmo Center did go extinct mostly just due to, because of climate change and so yeah I'd probably say is that more likely it could be one of the top predators in the ocean but that's just a guess in your second question who would win Brigmo Fisonus against us or orca I'd probably go orca on this one um Brigmo is a type of sperm whale or the biting sperm whale because it's got really large teeth uh, for its size. And so I'd probably say orcas because orcas are going to be, are going to be much better pack hunters. They're going to be better pack hunters. They're going to use that, their intelligence much, much more efficiently than, than would say Brigma Fight Center is. I'm not saying Brigma Fight Center is uh, stupid or anything like that. I'm not saying that. Brigma Fight Center is still an intelligent animal in terms of whales. And so I probably say that considering that Brigham Fice Center probably lived in smaller uh, pods than say uh, orcas did. Orcas uh, live in big groups. They do live in big groups. Not like say thousands of them. I'm talking about like say uh, close to 10. Whereas Brigham Fice Center uh, would probably have at least, at least uh, four or five members in a pod. And so that's probably the best case scenario. But I'd probably say orcas because they're more efficient hunters uh, than, say, Brigham Flight Center is. And your last question here, is Sorphaganax really just a bigger Allosaurus? That is still a debate of whether or not Sorphaganax is its own species, or is it like another species of Allosaurus, or just a larger species of Allosaurus? That is a big question. And in uh, most mostly right now it is its own species and so there's some distinguishable differences uh between other allosaurus species to say that like well, one is size and the other one is going to be like say the shape of the skull and some shapes of the bones you know that sort of thing and so that is more likely going to be the, the case there about whether or not it is going to be a uh, but if there are similarities, it says if there are similarities uh, of Sorphaganax being more likely an Allosaurus, uh, it would have the same type of, like some shape of the bones would actually be very similar. Uh, the skull would probably be uh, maybe sort of like, say, what uh, Allosaurus fragilis is, but more uh, longer and larger. Uh, but Right now, it's still debatable whether or not Sorophaganax is its own species or if it's uh, another species of Allosaurus. More, m right now, it is its own species. All right, Alex. Do you think that the osteoderms of Ceratosaurus were used for display, or do you think the osteoderms of Ceratosaurus were able to change color during the breeding season? That is a good question, Alex. Really good question. So osteoderms, if many people don't know, those are actually uh, bits of bone in the skin. And so like uh, osteoderms, you find them on crocodiles, you can actually find them in certain uh, types of reptiles. Like mostly reptiles actually have these osteoderms. Some mammals do have them too. So like uh, armadillos have them. Uh, and um, there's another mammal too that kind of has like those like uh, plate-like uh, uh, protrusions coming out of, uh, for its skin. Uh, but uh, yeah, mostly reptiles have these. And uh, Ceratosaurus did have osteoderms in uh, certain types of uh, Ceratosaurus specimens, excuse me, did have osteoderms right near their skeletons. And so that means that, that those osteoderms were in their skin. 
or those bones were on their skin. So were they used for display or could they change color? I highly unlikely they changed color because I think they, were, they would have been too small uh, to be used for changing color. I'd probably say that the crest-like horn on the nose and eyes are more likely going to change color than anything else, but more likely they probably did have like a throat pouch uh, like some certain theropods did uh, for like changing color and all that. But I don't see them uh, changing color. I'd probably say they're just used for display, you know, just like... Just, just like males, for example, males might have more osteoderms than females do, and they probably uh, use those to show off to say, "Look how big, like, look how big I am! Look how many osteoderms I have!" You know that sort of thing. That probably would be the case. That probably more likely would happen. Changing color would require a lot of energy in terms of the blood flow and all that sort of stuff to happen, and also they would have had many, many pigments uh, be in the and like the keratin of those osteoderms and so i probably say they're more used for display than anything else and then benjamin is Tyrannosaurus rex the strongest of all predatory dinosaurs it is one of them it is one of them uh it has a lot of muscle and has a lot of muscle a lot of muscle mass Tyrannosaurus rex is one of the biggest muscle masses of most predatory dinosaurs and um and so, basically, it's got, like, probably the strongest neck muscles of all predatory dinosaurs because, of course, it's got the strongest bite force of all predatory dinosaurs. Probably got the strongest legs. That does not mean that they're going to be fast, like, super fast. That means they're very strong. And they probably also had a very uh, strong tail as well. Now, the only dinosaur that could rival Tyrannosaurus rex in terms of strength would actually be Acrocanthosaurus and maybe Spinosaurus. But when it comes to overall strength that would probably go to Tyrannosaurus rex more likely but it is one of the strongest uh, theropods is plesiosaurus the best one of all plesiosaurus more likely more likely yeah it's can the name plesiosaur uh, is stegosaurus the slowest of all herbivorous dinosaurs i would say not it is one of the slowest dinosaurs but to me, the slowest dinosaurs are going to be the ankylosaurs and also the nodosaurs. Nodosaurs and ankylosaurs have so much uh, body armor that it is going to be very, very hard for them to be able to go in faster speeds. So if you got more like uh, bony protrusions coming out of your skin, so osteoderms, and it, you got those like spikes that are going, like on the shoulders, back, and even in the tail. And you have a lot of like um, keratinized skin to make it much like strong, much tougher for predators to be able to get through that. Mainly on the on the back, and also parts of the skull, and on the upper part of the tail. Uh, it is more like you are more likely to be slower uh, than other herbivorous dinosaurs. So, ankylosaurs and nodosaurs are more likely to be slower than stegosaurs. Stegosaurs can move at a much better pace than what. Uh, and Kylosaurs and Nodosaurs were able to do. And uh, who are an Eotyrannus or is Yong Guan Long? So two types of Tyrannosaurs, uh, nearly even, nearly even in size. Um, of course, as Yong Guan Long is from Asia and Eotyrannus is from Europe. Uh, that's a tough one. I'd say that's evenly matched. I'd probably say it's evenly matched uh, because of that. That they have the same speed. They had the uh, same type of teeth, nearly the same teeth, and you know, I, I'd probably say that's a that's a toss up. That's a toss up. I mean, I really don't know who would win that one. I, I'd probably say it's pretty evenly matched. I mean, I'm more likely to go Eo Tyrannus on that one, but I probably would say it's evenly matched. And uh, that's it for now. And that's all the questions I got for you. Next week will be a special episode. I'll let you guys know what kind of prehistoric animal I'm going to talk about, so stay tuned for that. You can also send me questions about dinosaurs or any other prehistoric life by emailing me at dinochris71 at gmail.com. Let's go to my Facebook page, Prehistoric Facts of Dino Chris. Like the page, you have to post your questions in the comment section. Please put them in the comment section. Don't put, don't put them on Messenger. Messenger is for private conversations, so please put the, put your questions in the comment section. And, uh, and, and, uh, you, and also for YouTubers out there, feel free to like the channel 
uh, like the videos, like the like the videos, subscribe to the channel, and also like the videos, and also share the cha share the videos and channel to anybody that is interested in dinosaurs and other prehistoric life, because it helps out the YouTube algorithm. And also for many of you that are checking out my videos, according to my analytics, a lot of you that are checking out my videos are not subscribed yet. So please feel free to hit the subscribe button and also stop on that notification bell so that way you can get weekly videos of every video that comes out every single week. And that's what I do. And then and that way you can keep it. Be informed of every single uh, thing that I talk about in terms of prehistoric life. And also, for YouTubers out there, feel free to leave your questions in the comment section because I do read them all. Your questions you mean a lot on these Q&A episodes like this one, and I appreciate that, and you guys are awesome for giving me some awesome questions. And remember, keep your questions short to the point. You can also follow me on Instagram at dino.chris.pf. I post pretty cool, pretty cool stuff on there. You can also follow me on Twitter at csgrall. It's my Twitter page. I post pretty cool stuff on there as well. Also, take take care of the people around you. you Notice if you're younger people out there to make solutions to your parents, your teachers, and your guardians. It's the best mode of for a good education. It's very important to have a good education just with a good education, you're going to do a good job in the future. In this kind of time, uh, wear a mask, social distance, wash your hands if you're not vaccinated yet, and also please get vaccinated because it's very important to reduce the spread of the virus so that way we could get to a normal that we all would like. And uh, that's it for now, and I'll see you guys next week.